please go ahead sir a very warm welcome to all of you to the session, uh, to the webinar organized by sochamp on illness to wellness the yoga way so it's a great opportunity for all of us to be a part of this especially at the time of pandemic when everybody is striving for the good health and the immunity this is a great opportunity for all of us to be a part of this and i will be the moderator for the session my name is manjusha and i'm a yoga teacher and an art of living faculty so any questions also in the middle of uh, the sessions you can keep on sending it to me i will take it to the special guest so i would like to welcome uh, mr anil rajput chairman sochamp csr council senior vice president corporate affairs itc limited he would be joining by the voice mr rajput over to you thank you very much uh, manjusha it is uh, my proud privilege to welcome guruji hr nagendra padmashri and president indian yoga association shri rajiv chandran director and officer in charge united nation information center for india and bhutan shri uh, ishwar v basavaddi basarwaddi director morarji desai basarwaddi uh, director morarji desai national institute of yoga ministry of ayush government of india <clears throat> good afternoon to all of you the topic of this webinar illness to wellness the yoga way has really got the optimist in me going up and about after all the past few months have been extremely challenging and difficult world over there are now well over 13 million covid-19 cases worldwide and india has over 9 lakh cases which are rising by thousands every day doctors have made it abundantly clear that a vaccine is not possible any time soon and increasingly bolstering one's immunity through various activities and thereby avoiding the contraction of this extremely dangerous virus is becoming the most effective and important step in dealing with the spread of this pandemic and this underscores the well known adage of prevention is better than cure india is blessed to have been the birth place of two of the most ancient and effective mental and physical knowledge treasure troves ayurveda and yoga both work wonders for the mind and body and this is extremely important to understand in today's context as increasingly the covid-19 pandemic is becoming more of mental issue than simply a physical one there are many ayurvedic herbs and they actually do wonders to your immunity and there are many ayurvedic uh, herbs which are available for the mental well be i'm sure the gurus who are here they will be able to give us more knowledge on this yoga is actually so ancient that it is considered it is considered to date back to indus valley civilization it is mentioned in the rigveda and the upanishads the yoga sutra of patanjali date back to 2nd century bc it gained prominence in the west in the 20th century after being introduced by swami vivekananda increasingly it has been proven that many of the yoga asanas can propel one's immune system to a different trajectory altogether all that is required is a bit of will and discipline and i'm sure that both of these will gain a lot of traction 
simply because of the magnitude of the problem that has now confronted the entire human race in the form of COVID-19 pandemic. Many of us fail to realize that these asanas can really be lifesavers from reducing sugar levels and blood pressure to improving circulation and overall feeling of well-being. These asanas are indeed a fountain of life. It is an established fact that yoga does wonders for both the mind and the body. In fact, there is something for everyone at every age group and therefore the potential is immense. Well-planned dissemination of information about how yoga can be used to prevent illness, asanas that accelerate recovery, and post ailment asanas that shield the body from relapses is needed today more than ever before. In all this, the extremely important and effective role played by Ministry of Ayush has to be mentioned. Never before has the significance and marketing of yoga, Ayurveda, and more been seen at the level it has reached today. The awareness is indeed at an all-time high. But there is a still a long way to go as simply we look at the overall benefits of yoga, its practice and established and acceptability should be much more. Many yoga gurus are pivotal to expanding the reach of this ancient practice. They are today household name and have played a leading role in spreading, in spreading awareness and communicating the benefits of yoga for all groups. Thanks to these gurus, gurus many youngsters are practicing it and they have busted the myth that yoga is for middle age and the old. So much so, the United Nations has declared a yoga day for the whole globe to benefit for, from this. As our journey in these difficult times continues, illness to wellness, the yoga way, is not just a topic that we are discussing. It is actually one of the solutions as anything that improves our mind and body is bound to place us in a much better position to deal with the adversities and challenges like the one faced by mankind today. However, as for everything else in life, moderation and initial supervision are needed till we become well aware of the nuances of this ancient practice. Having said this, there is no doubt in my mind that yoga gives us hope and yoga promises us a better tomorrow. I would like to thank all of you for your participation and look forward to a meaningful exchange of ideas and views. And I wish this webinar my very best. Thank you and Jai Hind. Thank you so much, Mr. Rajput, for such a wonderful information and a very knowledgeable uh, and thorough information on yoga. I would like to welcome for the opening remarks now Mr. Deepak Sood, Secretary General SHM. Manjusha, thank you so much. You know, I've been in two webinars since morning, and this is the first webinar since morning that I am finding. Uh, uh, okay, my camera was switched off. Uh, that I am finding a, a participation from a lady. Thank you very much for giving this gender diversity to this panel, first of all. So thanks to you that you're moderating this and also making the balance over here. So that's uh, my friend Anil just spoke uh, in quite a detail and I was just uh, jokingly at this point in time when we were not having the audience, declared him that he is acting like Mr. India today. And I was trying to replicate that when somebody just turned on my camera. So thankfully I was sitting in chair and well-dressed and. Uh, <laughs> in a position to be fitting in front of you guys. I'm really pleased to share this. Asocham has this long lasting relationship with ITC. ITC is a, a homegrown company 
which has been around for years and years and uh, they talk about uh, the when you uh, apply this whole aspect of atm nirbharta and the local pay vocal so this is one of those companies which which is not it's like a backyard company which has created everything from by itself from scratch and everything is is something that we are very proud of so we are also partners with them for the last 6 years on this this journey of illness to wellness i think as we have just the word illness this word illness india has the prowess of treating disease we have the best of the doctors best of the hospitals best of the treatments but what are we good at we are good at treating a disease and that's it so you have a disease and these people come to you and they will treat you but i think what required and covid has shown to us is that this part is important but is not a solution it is a end to a means uh, what is more important is the journey and the journey starts when you are born and you are continuing so therefore there are aspects of your mental health your inner self knowing yourself controlling that the discipline that one talks about and uh, not that i'm the most disciplined person uh, honestly uh, but i say that these are certain areas which help you do your business and therefore once you do it for the business you do it for yourself and every aspect of life you will be able to display these things i think the 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 art of yoga obviously i was talking about uh, uh, a lot of other things at this point in time but i'm specifically talking to yoga and when i compare yoga i compare yoga to golf and i am a golfer i am a tennis player and what happens in the three aspects when i try to look at the three poles of a triangle number one when i look at tennis it's a very high speed game so you are done within the few hours but after a few years of tennis a lot of doctors have told me you need to take care of your knees you can't continue to do this so there are aspects of games of exercise which result into uh, age into injury or into ways where you have to stop doing things yoga is one thing which anil also spoke about you know the people middle aged and older people are the ones who should do this but i think uh, similar was with golf people used to say it's a game of the older people uh, rich and the famous people that you do all these things and not uh, but you, what you find is kids at a younger age are better tennis players they are better teachers they better they learn quickly they are not having any fixed minds uh, mindset of of any nature yoga started at the early ages helps all these things put together i thought these are some things which help yoga helps you to build some very very good habits like i said it is discipline discipline all the way whether it is business education or or your yourself it's all about discipline self inquiry it's about non attachment to things it it really helps you all the way it's a way of life that one is talking about and uh, it helps you to build your general immunity and till the time you are not building immunity for yourself i don't think challenges like covid are ever going to be uh, conquered by us like what rajiv was talking when we were not live virus is here the second one i said may come much sooner than later the the vaccines may not come around but i think everything needs to be done by all of us to ensure that we we practice good health practices and build our immunity system ayush has already been spoken about ayurveda has already been spoken about so i would not touch upon those aspects of of uh, of uh, uh, what has already been spoken and as i conclude i would say as such i'm as a responsible chamber is trying to work towards the overall health of all its stakeholders all its partners all its members their families people connected vendors so that you know a healthy human a healthy human mind is a one which will think healthy things and will create a healthy ecosystem where business people society would be would be uh, where it is and i think we all should take a pledge that we all work towards a better preventive uh, preventive care uh, society and thank itc again when the same breath for being the partner with this illness to wellness campaign and we will do many many more of these and back to you uh, manjula thank you so much yeah thank you so much mr stu and uh, yeah sorry right. thank you so much mr stu it's a great uh, opportunity for us and uh, i think this is the yoga is the only way to defeat this disease and uh, let's all look forward to our special guest uh, i would be like to welcome dr ishwar v baswarathi he is a director morarji desai national institute of yoga and associated with ministry of ayush government of india he traveled abroad and represented morarji desai 
institute and government of india is known for his contribution in developing standard evidence based yoga protocol curriculum or dif for different diseases as well so uh, mr uh, dr uh, ishwar over to you om shant shant shanti नमस्ते गुरुजी, नमस्ते रिस्पेक्टेड राजपूत जी राजीव जी दीपक जी मंजूषा एंड ऑल दी ऑनरेबल मेंबर्स ऑफ आशिचोम फैमिली इट्स माय प्रिवलेज टू बी अगेन एसोसिएट विथ यू एंड वी डू रिमेंबर मोराज देसा इंस्टीट्यूट एंड माई सेल्फ एसोसिएटिंग विथ ashichom from the last more than a decade and conducting many programs so again uh, you have provided an opportunity to share uh, my views on yoga for wellness so i have to rest to dd news one program at around uh, 215 220 i'll present within 15 minutes uh, my views on how yoga can help in this uh, pandemic so i have a small presentation i will start with yes so these are the silent futures of yoga yoga is uh, essentially spiritual nowadays it's uh, being used as a fitness program mostly and uh, some people use it wellness some people uh, practice it for health to solve some uh, health related issues for the management of many disorders but it is essentially spiritual if uh, spirituality has been taken out the essence of yoga practice is remain silence therefore uh, whenever we practice yoga we have to address uh, silently the spiritual issue of yoga then only uh, yoga is being practiced or taken into our life uh, in totality and it's a science uh, but it is not only empirical science it's a subtle science and third one uh, is uh, yogic practices are always mind centric if any practice is doesn't have the impact on our mind and emotions and we have to readdress the practices of yoga these are the three always i highlight the spiritual component so then the scientific aspect it's a subtle science and mind centric practices so whenever we practice yoga they help us to reduce the stress so uh, nowadays uh, stress has become an integral part of our life so we cannot avoid the stressful conditions we have to live in that but we can manage the stress we can reduce the stress by changing our behavior or be changing our attitude so yoga not only give some practices to uh, strengthen our body organ systems but also change our attitude mind is the most important factor so reduction in the stress level always increases the mindfulness increase in the metabolism a sense of relaxation that leads to positive health so what are there i made very compact uh, presentation so it is one nutshell i am giving the whole yoga practice you can see one side there are prerequisites yamas and niyamas many people we forget that so always i mentioned that they are the quality control so to what extent we adopt yamas and niyama in our sadhana to that extent we get the better results so there are some toxins in our body mind and that can be removed by two things one is the yogic cleansing practices called shuddhi kriyas or proper diet that's why in uh, nisargopachara they said sarve rogah malavashah 
langanam paramaksha so therefore uh, yuktahara or mitahara yuktahara for the disease person mitahara for the yoga person and therapeutical diet for the disease conditions so there are different types of thing so we always detoxify with the shatkarmas and proper dietary pattern we detoxify what else we had today yoga means yogasana but you can see the spheres i have three spheres asana is a small component pranayama is a much more but bigger component and the dhyana is the 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 most wide and compact actually if you see yoga practices or yoga is dhyana all practices lead to dhyana that's why the asana or pranayama facilitate to meditate better that meditation changes our attitude then yoga works how it works so once we detoxify our body there are some practices like asana pranayama and dhyana so then there will be balanced endocrinal and nervous control that increases the mind body control that brings calm relax and refresh leads to health and harmony this one slides give the entire the network how yoga works so in our institute myself follow this yogic intervention how yoga shall be practiced so we start with some purification even in the morning shaucha is important so then we advise some diet modification simply practicing five asana six asana one or two breathing practices doesn't make much difference definitely they yield some results but that doesn't make much difference but purification diet modification are very very important to begin with then asana as i mentioned postural modification the body alignment and breathe alignment by breath modification and relaxation by different uh, yogic relaxation techniques like shavasana then yog nidra then short uh, uh, relaxation techniques quick relaxation techniques like that developed by s vyasa so then this once we relax then only we can concentrate long concentration lead to meditation only dhyana or meditation bring behavioral modifications or that is our vihar so as i mentioned the prerequisites suppose in the pandemic situation always we are advising neti dauti kapal bhati so people don't advise the dauti but we have different forms of dautis so relevant forms of dautis once in a week or once in 15 days but neti and kapal bhati on alternative days so we are nowadays using them they are cost effective and very very important in this pandemic situation therefore neti and dhaut neti dhauti kapal bhati they will clean our upper respiratory tract the nasal passages frontal sinuses etc will be cleaned which is the up to throat we can clean every day in the morning gogling and uh, neti if you don't use the sutra then use the uh, jalaniti or you can do it like this for prolonged time that also creates some uh, friction that will helps to clean it so like this very simple techniques but they are very effective and uh, many yoga institution including mdny are started conducting some research to show the efficacy of these kriyas before advocating any pranayama or asanas etc so shat kriyas detoxifies the body and cleanses act, activates and revitalizes the organs tones up the functions of the vital organs and uh, help us to bring uh, uh, just uh, a purification or freshness in the body and mind that prepares to practice uh, yoga there are some uh, loosening practices or yogic sukshmayas so in our common yoga protocol it's a well thought uh, module of 45 minutes devised by eminent yoga masters under the chairmanship of guruji dr h r nagendra ji we prepared a five 45 minutes yoga protocol where we chosen some uh, five kinds of practices to prepare ourselves for this so then uh, these are the neck exercises then uh, uh, shoulder exercises trunk exercises knee and all this after that we come to the bunch of yoga practices then there are forward bending backward bending lateral bending 
twisting, topsy turvy, balancing postures. And but the practice of yogasana, they can be more in exercise mode that will only affect our breathing and uh, vital functions. But once we practice asana in a proper manner, that mind body coordination, sthiram, sukham, prayatna shaitilya. So these are the three principles always we follow. You can see the alignment, how we bring the alignment in the practice of yoga. So I am showing, I am rushing because uh, time is very short for me. So these are the some of the alignments I am showing it, how we are really scientifically, because I come from the uh, physics background. So always I taken care of the fundamental forces and gravity and all these things. So accordingly, the pranic alignment will come and mind-body relations will be established. So in our common yoga protocol, very simple practices. I am showing it. We have introduced uh, these are the some uh, standing, sitting, prone lying, supine lying postures. They are very simple but very, very effective even in the management of many common uh, disorders. So then comes to the pranayama. So what happened then whenever we practice shatkarma and pranayama, once his nasal passage or the respiratory tract is clean, respiratory muscles become strong and lungs become healthy. That helps to bring breathe control and lungs are becoming healthy. Control of heart, heart to the vagus, vagus to the prana, prana to the mind. This is the chain. So that's why chale vate chale chittam. Once you manage the prana, then we can manage the mind and mind stuff. So pranayama most importantly reduce the stress level, boost the immune system, reduce cholesterol, increase antioxidant protection, and so on and so forth. I am sharing this uh, PowerPoint to you. I am just rushing. So third important uh, aspect is dhyana. So many people nowadays uh, give dhyana, just go on giving commentary after commentary. But dhyana is a very systematic process. Especially Yoga, Patanjali and Buddha explained very systematically Arya Astangika Marga and Astang Yoga. There is a systematic process of doing Dhyana, how body should be, how breathing should be aligned, how senses are to be withdrawn and how to concentrate and then leads to meditation. And I have shown even the pyramid structure, triangular basis, etc. Then there is Samam Kaya Shirogriva. There is a broader base in a triangular base and our neck and spine should be straight while doing meditation. Then it helps to, especially the chakra meditation. So the body posture is most important. Alignment of breathing is very important. So meditation brings a better concentration and sharpness, reduces relaxation and reduces uh, these things and uh, physical, mental and emotional health is going to be improved by practice of meditation. So how yoga helps in the management of stress in the pandemic condition? As I said earlier, yoga is helpful in the patients with the COVID patients. Not I am not talking about the patients in the ventilators or something, but uh, those who are affected with COVID, they can also practice some breathing, relaxation, Meditation. meditation and even some very simple yoga pastures also recommended we have started in our daily in the 11 districts we have already started uh, teaching yoga to the covid patients so then uh, uh, the second aspect is those who are in first hand contact and the large population is under stressful conditions then the simple yoga asana some pranayama and dhyana the capsule will work a wonders that relaxes the mind body improves self-awareness, calms the mind, increase serotonin and GABA, decrease in the HP axis, cortisol, which is stress hormone, and uh, dopamine, etc. They have been. This is the impact of uh, yogic practices. Uh, I put the entire research in a nutshell of one slide. So regular practice of yoga brings what? It uh, active and flexible body, calm and composed mind, and it brings positive emotions, and we can do actions and relaxation, blissful awareness. i thankful for the my teacher, uh, Dr. Nagratnaji, always used to tell and always I follow these five, uh, whether I am practicing yoga or not. These are the markers. So I check myself whether I'm doing good yoga or not. These are the markers I'm giving for the yoga practitioners. If you are active, whether you may be 
a little but a poor weight or underweight that is made but you are active and positive calm and composed mind always action and relaxation have that bliss inside these are the characteristics of uh, a person who practices yoga which is the need of the hour and as you know our moraji desa institute and is the premier institute of yoga and we have a who collaborative center we have conducted uh, some very wonderful uh, um, uh, projects multi uh, meta analysis we brought in six yoga models on different disorders and now we are bringing up yam app and that is the landmark where millions of people will start practicing across the job once who launches is so with this i thanks once again and i am rushing and uh, thanks for the Dr. opportunity Ishwar. and uh, always uh, thank you very much for your patience sharing yeah. dhanyawad thank you om shanti shanti dhanyawad guruji thank you so much uh, dr ishwar for sharing uh, these valuable uh, information which is which can be applied in our day to day life there is one question if you have one minute for uh, me to answer yeah okay so is there any plans of ayush ministry to appoint yoga practitioner in quarantine center yes uh, we are uh, not ayush ministry it has given freedom to the different yoga institutions and also including uh, md and nayy in our uh, institute uh, today uh, i i am very happy today itself in delhi government our uh, instructors 30 instructors we deployed in the covid centers so morning uh, 8 to 11 they teach covid patients in the quarantine uh, covid patients then uh, we have a uh, project we are taken up and on 20th we are launching and uh, that is for the covid contact persons the family members or the police personnel or medical professionals we are starting on 20th and uh, from last 3 uh, months or more along with many yoga institutions we are all the entire yoga family is conducting online classes and huge number of uh, uh, public participation is there in the uh, that's most important so general public is most important uh, we are already having definitely there is one more question the government also had invited proposal to study effect of yoga meditation in fighting uh, covid 19 and similar viruses any updates on this piha no the first sentence i missed what is the first one the government had invited proposal to study effect of yoga meditation in fighting covid 19 yes and the, similar viruses yes. yeah yes one is uh, dst has already special drive uh, there are more than 500 applications has come yes vesa has already started uh, guruji will uh, definitely brief it and we have also taken up uh, uh, three projects from our institute and on the similar lines it takes ccry and also has taken up and definitely in the next uh, few uh, weeks uh, sorry few months because it takes time uh, many of the medical people they want to see yoga from their angle but yoga has its own principle and methodology uh, it takes time for us to convince them but yoga works 100% it works but it has the limitations we have to understand that limitations and uh, we have to adopt yoga according to the principle and uh, it do wonders it's uh, there is no alternative uh, yes there are medicines but uh, for the rehabilitation and keeping us preventive etc yoga is the best means and we are generating already uh, some researches are there but particularly on the covid uh, uh, these things because just it is a uh, four months uh research projects has been taken up it takes some more time to publish them yes, thank you so much dr ishwar thank you so much for answering these questions thank and uh, thank you it's a pleasure Please, i will talk to you later because i have to join deep they are calling me thank you very much okay thank you so thank much, much dr ishwar so i would like to welcome now uh, padmashri guruji dr h r nagendra which needs no introduction but still i would like to introduce <coughs> all of you chancellor swami vivekananda anusandhan samasthana and president india yoga associate dr nagendra is an eminent personality and he has traveled across the world he is a he is a known personality in national and international arena both it's been a post doctorate he worked with british columbia canada and uh, then harvard university after that since 1975 he has been associated with uh you know uh, this vivekananda anushthana so i would like to welcome guruji to this and uh, 
Guruji, over to you. Thank you very much, Panjusha. Such a delight to be with you all, Rajiv ji and Daniel ji and uh, Vasudev ji, to make this uh, SOCHAM webinar. And when you look at the title, it actually represents the yoga dimension. Illness to wellness. You replace I with we. That is the whole emphasis of yoga. Yoga is the process of joining. Yujyate anena iti yoga, it is said. Yoga is to expand from small individual personality we are to the tall pervasive infinite personality. <coughs> In the language of technical things, we say from Manamaya Kosha to Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vignana, Anandamaya Kosha. And that is the whole process of expansion. So already Vasudevi has brought out beautifully the whole dimensions as to how yoga practices can be very useful and what are the practice to be done, how we developed our protocol for the International Day of Yoga has been brought forth. So in the present context of COVID, how we had to bring this wellness to the people at large was our question. Therefore, we collected all the data available in terms of research publication published in high-end international journals and brought forth the solution for this COVID prevention and management. And that paper has been published in International Journal of Yoga, a nicely developed thing, and people can go and then see how we have been able to show that. And then we said, okay, now we have the theory, we have the philosophy, and we have strong background of what research papers have been able to be published. Then let us try it out. Therefore, we took up a survey of the people in the whole country, in like Pan India, in 38 states, and we brought a questionnaire called COVID Health Assessment Scale, called CHAS. And we used the CHAS and collected the data and about 25,000 people data we have taken. <clears throat> so we have been able to analyze this data very extensively and we are now, we have submitted the papers to best journals. The highlight of that is that if person have the wellness strategy used there in life, lifestyle, they become less vulnerable for the pandemics. So we compare the two groups, the vulnerable and the non-vulnerable groups. Vulnerable groups is people who already have some of the NCDs and some of the problems they have, and also those people who are in continuous service to the people who are having the COVID, you know, that we form the vulnerable group. The other one people is the non-vulnerable group. So what we found in the non-vulnerable group compared to the vulnerable is that they had a good lifestyle. What personality brought out so nicely that ultimately yoga is a way of life. You know, it's a science of holistic living. And it is the way by which you can work stress-free. Working in relaxation is the key essence is slightly brought forth. You know? Therefore, this is what we have to do. <clears throat> and what is the role of stress? And what is the role of the wellness? Stresses manifest as illnesses. You know? So a stress-free condition will lead us to wellness. And what is that stress? It is very well known. It is a state of imbalance. Imbalance at the mind level, the emotional level, intellectual level, and down to the physical level, causing autonomic imbalance, endocrine imbalance, and settling down in imbalances at various levels, even at the gene level. And this imbalance shows up as the illness or the disease. The ease is disturbed. So disease takes place. And the remedy is to learn the art and science is to deal with the stresses. When we do that, then we move to the wellness. <clears throat> What happens in the present context of COVID? You know, look at the coronavirus, and you look at all the structure of various viruses that have come up. This is the most beautiful structure. You know? 
it is spherical in nature, nice spikes and everything. And so nice to look at that. You know? And this beauty should not attract our immune system to and this can happen when our immune system loses its capacity to clearly distinguish who is a friend, who is the enemy. In yoga, we call it as the viparya. In the chitta vrutis, various types of things, we have the prapana, viparya, vikalpa, nidras, hrutayaha, the five modifications of the mind. In that, viparya is the wrong knowledge. A person cut jhandis, he thinks the whole world has become yellow. <clears throat> a person in the evening going down, he sees a ghost in a post. She is a serpent in a rope. This is called viparaya. <clears throat> Wrong knowledge. Similarly, the immune system, if it gets into this viparaya and thinks this, these vibrates are so beautiful and they are very good friends, come on in, come on in, then you have the problem. This is one aspect. Otherwise, our immune system is a very strong army within us. And it is very fine and wonderful. When you look at the size of the coronavirus, it is very, very small. Though it is the biggest among all the viruses, it is this small thing, 0 to 5 microns. But our white blood cells, which form the RB in our immune system, is much, much bigger, 50 to 100 times bigger. And when you look at the numbers, the number of coronavirus that can come in could be maybe in hundreds or maybe thousands or maybe million. But our white blood cells are in billions. No? So this is, therefore, we have very strong army we have. And even if the corona comes in, we'll be able to easily ward it off. <clears throat> Similarly, if the corona enters through the nose, as we know, goes into the things, we have border security force we have. That is natural killer cells. No? These people also can ward off. So we have all the possibilities, high probability of not getting infected if the immune system is normal. But if the immune system gets perverted by the viparaya or gets weakened, how does the immune system become weakened? Because of the stress. It is very well known in this that stress is the immunosuppression factor. That when you stress more and more, the immune system gets weakened. And as the immune system becomes weak, then its capacity goes away. That's how the corona can hit us. Therefore, what is the solution? So we are trying to look at the vaccines and also the remedies in terms of treatment which can kill these viruses and strengthen our immune system through the vaccines to deal with the corona attack. This is what we do in the modern medical system. Fine, it's good. But as it is known, as already been told by Anil and others, you know, it may take now one year or two years, it may happen and it will be staying there for longer and longer duration. This is what people are seeing there. And the post-COVID may not be the pre-COVID condition at all. So what does the yoga prescribe? That we have to move from this illness to wellness by the yoga way in which we strengthen our immune system and keep our immune system healthy and wonderfully well to deal with any corona things. And this can happen when we have the right lifestyle. And so beautifully brought out in this nice picture, was already told. It is as told in Ayurveda. No? That is the first one is the Ahara, then the Vihara, then the Vichara, and the Achara, as it is normally told. No? That food, healthy food we have to take. Unhealthy food and these things are going to hit the immune system and cause big imbalances. Then the right type of vichara, the right knowledge has to come out. And that is very necessary in the present context when we have the COVID, that we have to follow all the instructions given by the WHO and prescribed and implemented in our country so beautifully. Thanks to our prime minister who brought this so early. So we did not go experiential right in the beginning. And now when the COVID lockups, lockdowns have been reduced, then the social interaction comes and we are likely to get into big exponential development. Today we have the highest spike in the country, you know, largest number of people who have got into the corona. <clears throat> Therefore, what we have to do is to have a proper understanding and it has to be implemented. Vichara and Vihara, 
is, um, as you said, the relaxation dimension. So we have the right type of relaxation technique, the right type of enjoyment process, and we have to move from I to V in our family. The lockdown has given us uh, the great opportunity to work in the family. Earlier, we had no opportunity. Most of my friends, they say that we never had this opportunity to stay home for such a long time, you know, and to be with our families at all. So now we have the wonderful opportunity to be with our families, and that's how we had to bring up our family tradition of love, prema bhava, and giving and sharing and sharing with everybody, and work as one unit. The family should be one unit. And throughout the globe, with our interactive IT that we have, we have a global family that is getting created. And that's how we move from our I to V in the whole encounter. And then we have to have the complete acharya, achara, that is the behavior, how we are going to behave in the world. And many people in isolation, they feel that it's a terrible thing that's happening. We're in a prison, we are locked down, and they get anxious, they get afraid, and do all types of things. It happened to one of our very close uh, surgeons in London. <clears throat> and he is an emergency surgeon, and then he got into the COVID. In the hospital, he got little treatment and came home, quarantined, and his greatest problem is isolation. He has always been very, very active, running from morning till night, running, running, running. And he never sat few minutes this thing. Now he's completely locked down. And it was such a terrible thing for him. And he wrote and uh, sent a WhatsApp and also the email that it has been terrible, terrible. That I told him, look here. You can look at this as a big uh, prison in which you are locked down and become more anxious, more afraid, and more uh, stressed up. And what is going to happen? As a surgeon, you know, it is going to suppress the immune system. You are likely to again get back to the COVID. This is one thing that you are doing. But you have an opportunity to think that it is a great opportunity for me to learn the deeper dimensions of life, a paradigm shift in your life, which has not happened. So use this opportunity to learn the asana, the pranayama, the meditation, the uh, secrets of Upanishads and others. And then you'll be wonderfully enjoying the whole day in these things. And 14 days can be a big transformation process in you. I started sending emails and WhatsApp and then also video sheets and other. Then he started using and he was so happy. Within one day comes, again, this is the right thing that I should have done and I'm going to do that. And he started studying Vasveshwara and others, many other things and started learning the dimension. And he started experimenting on different aspects of pranayama. And he said, yes, Kumbhaka. Yes, Dr. Nagendra. Yes, Dr. Nagendra was already sharing uh, about the thoughts on how, you know, people are more scared about the loneliness. So how to overcome that? You know, they are not more scared about the, uh, you know, the pandemic. They are more scared about the loneliness. Yes, yes, Dr. Nagendra, over to you. Uh, we have to deal with different categories of the people. Therefore, we develop simple yoga modules, just like we have the IDY yoga module for 45 minutes. We develop simpler techniques of 10 to 15 minutes for the children below 15 years. Then we have 60 to 60 years, we have another modules. And above 60 years, we have third module. So these modules are very simple. 10 to 15 minutes, it has to be done three, four times in a day. And we started spreading this entire dimension in our videos throughout the country and all over the world, and people started using that. Then this can be a big preventive to strengthen our immune system, and thousands of people have started using them. Then when people have gone inside, then they are in the hospital, when they have this positive thing, what can we do? For that, again, we develop still simpler techniques which you can do. We have been dealing with a large number of cancer patients and such people who are paralyzed, who cannot come out of their bed. Such people also we have been able to help by various simple techniques of yoga, simple, slow, deep breathing and meditation and others. You know, this thing can help. Therefore, we develop simple modules which are there. 
we developed about six to eight different small small modules and we started giving to them and miracles started happening we had one of our cardiothoracic surgeon in uh, italy and he was in the hospital he was so severe and he said that now i have no oxygen in my brain and i was about to die then he said i got your video i told that what i had to do i took a slow deep breathing and started doing slow breathing and abdominal breathing and others as you have prescribed in the small modules of one minute two minutes three minutes and suddenly there's an expansion there's an explosion in my mind i got into a new altogether wonderful things that i started developing and he wrote that wonderful thing and within three days he came out of the hospital and soon after the quarantine he became completely normal and he thanked india for developing this yoga techniques and yoga modules and said that they are so happy and started giving to thousands and thousands of people and these are individual anecdotes but we had to do the systematical clinical study that we have taken up but the yoga as an adjunct to the present modality of treatment is necessary therefore as professor already said in various hospitals and we started we developed the protocol for this thing and developed the design for that and randomized control trials we have started and when here is multi centric trial we are going to do that and we are hopeful that in a few months from now as you said we will be able to show the efficacy of yoga as we have shown efficacy of yoga in diabetes and many other things that we have done we will be able to do this things and we show how things are changing how the immune parameters are changing how the different things are changing can all be tracked so initially we take for the people three groups that is the people who are not diagnosed as having covid that is one group that is prevention the second thing is the non asymptomatic things people who do not have symptoms for them the techniques and then people who have symptoms and have been proven positive and who are in the hospital in the mild moderate and severe condition we have got different modules and we are going to give all these things how do we give the techniques we cannot go inside and our teachers cannot do that so they have to do online thanks to information technology it we have got the online thing and we develop things and people can go these things and then start doing this and this is how we are going to track what is happened to them when they do these things and therefore yoga can go easily as an adjunct to the current uh, treatment modalities whatever modalities we are doing whether it is ventilation or whether treatment things various medicines let them do that along with that you start adding yoga and it can work wonders it can increase the efficiency and other this is how we are research base for which we are known in swami vivekananda yoga sandhan samsthan our yoga university we have been able to develop and hundreds of papers we have published and things are going to go wonderfully well therefore we have the base paper which has been published in international journal of yoga giving the whole dimension of yoga based on the current thing how immune system can go number one number two a big pan india survey the chas survey that we have done and throughout the world we have done the behavioral assessment scale program that is about 4000 people in about eight countries we have collected the data that also is showing similar thing now uh, ayush has asked us to take up the entire thing of the ayush data that i have collected we are analyzing this thing and now the more rigorous you know multi centric trial we are taking up and see that it will be shown as yoga is the dimension a time has come where we have to have a complete shift in our paradigm shift in our lifestyle from the lifestyle of you know just wealth wealth alone towards wealth and health and that can happen when we move from illness to wellness the yoga way and i congratulate ashokam for organizing this webinar and thank you manjusha and rajiv ji and amit ji all people and ji for organizing the shibir and i dr nagendra i have lot of questions for you uh, before you move on so i let me just share it with you uh, so there is one question which has come from uh, one of our uh, you know participant so they would like to know the people who have diabetes asthma and hypertension blood pressure and how to face you know they are you know the chances of getting infected with covid 19 are higher so yeah. how to you know work on that you know what asana or what will be useful for them in this, that 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 is the program that we had developed you know that is simple 10 to 15 minutes program if they are less than 15 years 
than 16 to 60 years that we can share and it's there in our website and these people can use that and it has got the video we have got the complete thing just like we have the complete yoga protocol for the youngsters you know they should do the yoga protocol of the idy which is 45 minutes and which will keep them very healthy and strong you know that can happen these things so just thinking about yoga alone will not do. you have to do the practice bring about the transformation that's important i might be a great fan of yoga and i can have a lot of belief in yoga but if i don't do the practice if i don't change myself and continue to have all my um, ahara vihara everything in a uh, imbalanced way then i won't help therefore yoga is practice 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 bring about a transformation that's important Yes, Dr. Nagendra, the next question is how a person can maintain oxygen level in his body at all times with yoga? Because that is the problem. People are facing problem in terms of breathing. We have done a lot of research in uh, even asthmatic cases, severe asthmatic cases, symptomatic condition for which we are known. From 1986, when we published our paper in British Medical Journal, we are known for dealing with this respiratory distress. How yoga can be a wonderful tool and special pranayama and yoga modules have been developed people can start using that by which our respiratory system will be in a good condition it can be very strong and the necessary conditions of the oxygen levels and other things can all be maintained very well and that's how we have to do this thing those modules are also available in our website people can go and look at those modules as to how we use the different breathing practices along with the pranayama dimension and the dimensions of meditation for doing these things. The next question is, uh, people are asking that, uh, uh, you know, yoga at times works not for all. You know, they have been practicing, but still they are not finding any results. So what is the problem? Is it the problem with the system or uh, for a long time, longer period, you know, uh, you know, it's like uh, for the rest, half of their life they have spent without doing it. And just recently they have started off uh, so what could be the reason behind that? See, general yoga will have general uh, improvements. But if you want to deal with specific ailment, you should have specific modules. Always I say that medicine is good. Can we say that medicine is medicine? And say so give the same medicine to all diseases. Even no. insulin is good for diabetes. But if we give more insulin than what is required, you may end up with uh, the challenge and then we may even die. Similarly, if you give less, then the effect may not be there. Therefore, you have to choose what yoga we have to give, how much to give, when to give, and how much not to give. Unless we do that, it may not help. Doing general yoga will not prevent person becoming diabetic. I know so many diabetic patients, they have been yoga, practicing yoga. They come and ask this question. Why we are not what? rid of diabetes? That's the thing that we have to do. So we have to specifically tailor make. This is what MDN I and we are all doing it from last few decades as to what aspect of yoga what modules of yoga can deal with this thing that's why for the covid also all of our experts joined together to prepare the specific yoga modules for the covid to deal with the respiratory distress and also to strengthen the immune system in the present context depending on the age groups and that's the one that we are now doing to have the clinical trials and different levels People share, uh, please share the name of the website. People are asking for which website they should log on to. svyasa.edu.in oh, Svyasa is the short form of Swami Yogananda Yoga Nusandhan Samsthan. No? Okay, svyasa.edu.in Okay. And uh, another if question is... Uh, email, she was, okay. If they send their emails, and we'll give you, share all the different videos that we have prepared for them and they can use that please share the email uh, id of uh, you know the the office so that they can generally share they can generally write okay and the, the last question is i would like to talk to you channel again yeah okay. they can also subscribe the youtube channel yeah. under your name so you have a YouTube yeah, channel, is... people can subscribe for it also, right? Okay, that's fine. Apart from that, there is one more question. During pregnancy, how, uh, you know, pregnant women can do yoga in this at this point of time? Yeah, even that uh, we recently had a sort of course in which we dealt with yoga for uh, the pregnant women, neonatology and other things. 
we dealt with and our experts talked about Dr. Nagaratna, Dr. Lata and all these people gave a wonderful thing. And we had hundreds of people who joined for that course and the specific modules. The whole modules has to be developed with precision to tackle the problems in different levels. And it has to be researched on and then show what are the negative things which have to be avoided. What is to be done and what is not to be done is very important. When you develop a particular drug also, first you must see what are all the negative things it should not happen. Then only the FDI is going to give the permission. You know, at least if it doesn't work, at least it should not cause harm. That's the first thing. So for all our yoga therapies and others, we train them in these things. And then, which are the ones that gives them the better and better results? That's how to. Similarly, for pregnancy, what are the dimensions which help them for natural delivery? Hundreds and thousands of people have learned this technique and they have been able to avoid the cesarean and they have been able to have natural delivery in the children. Similarly, some of the pregnant women who are likely to get uh, the mentally retarded children, you know, then such people, we have been able to give special yoga of Dr. Shamantakmani Narendran. She is a very uh, wonderful pediatrician. She did her PhD with me and then showed how we'll be able to reduce the intrauterinal growth retardation by using the yoga technique. Three papers have been published in that in the best international journals in the United States. And this is how the specific modules to be used in different things can work for us. That is the dimension that comes up. Definitely. So any email ID people can contact you because there are a lot of people who are asking for the email ID, any general email ID. Thank of, you very much. Anyway. Bye. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nagebra. It's uh, nice, uh, you know, it's nice to know about your visionary thoughts about, uh, uh, you know, this the yoga. And thank you so much for joining in. And now I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Sri Rajiv Chandran. He's a director and office in charge, United Nations Info Center for India and Bhutan. And Sri Rajiv Chandran, as uh, you know, everybody knows that UN has come up uh, with, you know, a few years back that. Indian International Yoga Day will be celebrated across the world. So after that, uh, you know, it has started celebrating it across the world. So Mr. Rajiv Chandran, uh, I would like to uh, over to you. It's like you can share your thoughts. And apart from that, Mr. Rajiv Chandran, he himself has come through, uh, you know, in his personal life also, he has he's been coming across a lot of uh, uh, COVID uh, issues. And uh, he also stayed quarantine. So I would like to, uh, you know, I would like, uh, you know, to share, to listen his experiences as well. Over to you, Shri Raji. Thank you. Thank you, Manjusha. I would like to uh, first thank Asucham for this opportunity of joining this webinar in which such wonderful yoga practitioners have shared their knowledge. Uh, I'm not a yoga specialist but I work for the United Nations. And I want to begin uh, by going back to the day when Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the UN General Assembly in September 2014 asked the global community to declare International Yoga Day. And it was amazing that within about two months, 175 nations came together and on uh, 14, 11th December 2014, the global community decided, yes, we need an International Yoga Day. And countries from across the global spectrum uh, joined together, 175 of 193 nations said yes to Yoga Day. So that's the global power that yoga has had. That is the uh, symbol of the cultural and soft power that India enjoys in the global community. And since 2014, of course, Yoga Day has only been growing and growing. And the awareness of yoga, as we know, is now uh, an international phenomenon. One of the things that really intrigued me about uh, this webinar today is your topic, illness to wellness. And I think that uh, the recent pandemic has shown us that wellness doesn't depend on your individual personality anymore. Wellness is a relationship you have with the planet, with clean air, clean water. Wellness is a relationship you share with people around you, your immediate family. 
but wellness is also a function of all the social relationships that you have if you believe in physical distancing and the person next to you does not then your wellness is compromised so wellness is a relationship and i think that that is an understanding that we need to now create in dealing with the pandemic wellness is a shared value wellness happens because others are equally concerned and are on the same page of issues as you are if somebody else coughs on my face my wellness is compromised if somebody else is not wearing a mask my wellness is compromised so the entire scale of wellness is now a relationship quotient rather than something that i do on my own and so my illness is also dependent on all those relationships and i think covid has made you understand that that it's not just you but it is you in relationship to the world that you get this illness and that how you have to manage it as manjusha very kindly reminded me and told the group uh, i've had a covid experience recently uh, from early june 12 members of my family including me my wife my daughter son in law all the uh, staff staying with us 12 of us uh, were tested positive it was a very stressful time uh i don't want to uh, miniaturize that experience three of our family members had uh more than moderate symptoms and cause for concern uh the ability and nine of us were asymptomatic so you know we had three uh uh patients uh, who had uh, uh symptoms that were moderate to severe and uh, nine of us were asymptomatic uh monitoring keeping nutrition high building immunity when you get covid you are so tired that you can't do any of these uh exercises or things you are flat on the bed the virus saps your energy and even after you recover after your 10 day period and then another two weeks of uh, recuperation you are still exhausted tired and limp so the body takes time to recuperate and convalesce fully uh, after the the covid attack i think the uh, personal message is to fold one we have to build our immunity because after all it is when your immunity is compromised that the virus gets the upper hand and so whatever it takes to keep your immunity high whether it is ayurveda whether it is other supplements whether it is your grandmother's nuskas for uh, you know building immunity whatever works best for you is what you need to adopt and embrace but ensure that your immunity is high monitor your oximeter readings regularly don't wait for you to become a covid patient before you start monitoring your oximeter readings today in this era of high risk please keep start taking your readings beforehand so that you know your own normal and you know when that normal goes into a problem so it will help the doctors also understand the nature of how you are engaging with covid or how covid is engaging with you so that's the second uh, uh, suggestion first is high immunity second is uh, regular oximeter readings and the third is that keep your mind strong and i think that's really the link between yoga wellness and covid as uh, guruji mentioned you have to see to it that your attitude is positive even when i had 12 patients in the house i did not let it 
bother me. I did not let the virus get the better of my head. And I think fear, panic, stigma, discrimination, these are all issues that should be thrown out when you deal with a pandemic like COVID. You have to be positive, optimistic, hopeful, intelligent, and use your brain to fight the virus. And I think that that power that we have and that strength that we should develop within us, the core, that core has to be strengthened. And that's how at least my family came out of the virus. And I'm very proud of each of the family members who were able to do that, who were able to give that, you know, that final push mentally and emotionally to, you know, to fight the virus and to say that, hey, we can do it and we are stronger than you. I think that's what it is. So my takeaways from my session, the UN embracing yoga day, wellness, not as an individual uh, uh, strategy, but as a community strategy and as a strategy that links you to the world because it's not your wellness, but everybody else's wellness that counts. And third, don't let COVID let you down. Use your strength, your inner core strength to fight the virus. So those are my three points in this Asasham webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Sri Rajiv Chandran. And it was a, uh, it was really uh, great to connect. We were able to connect with you because it was your real story. And I'm sure all the participants must be feeling the same. And great to, it was a pleasure to have you on, you know, to us on uh, this webinar. And look forward to Thank see you. you again in Athenia. Thank you so much. And all the Thank participants, you. keep taking care of yourself. Stay safe, stay home, and keep your immunity up. And keep doing yoga and meditation. That is the only way to protect yourself. Stay home and take care of yourself. Take care. Bye.